Ken, North Pole. Yes. North Pole, congratulations. Thank you. You dared to, uh, to have a thought, to, to have a dream, and to make it come true, and I admire you for that. I know a couple months ago when we had a little shakedown in, in Ely, uh, there was uh, some concerns all around about whether you'd be uh, ready for this, and you told me you'd get up for the big game, and you sure did. This was, um, it was really a very difficult trip physically. Yeah, and, that's no uh, lie. No question about it. We averaged, oh, I don't know, some almost 15 miles a day. That's north, not east or west, and up and down. And uh, you were in the... You were in the uh, driver's seat on one of those big sleds almost all the time. Thank you very which, much. Uh, for most people, is uh, is really where all the hard work takes place. Although it takes some good skills to ski as well. But uh, um, you did a great job with that sled. Thank you. You were very Thank patient you. under some very uh, sometimes difficult circumstances. <laughs> so tell me, what was one of the high points of the trip? Let's see, high points. High points. High point of the trip was was uh, really, from my perspective, was was getting here to the North Pole with this large and this diverse a group. Huh. That was that was uh, that was Paul's my goal, and uh, we you got pulled, here you pulled it off safely. Yeah, yeah. Low point. Low point. Low point. Let's see. Low point. Low point. Clearly, clearly was um, when uh, Dan and Ricardo. For me, low point was when Dan and Ricardo had to leave for physical reasons. Hmm. Most exciting moment? Most exciting moment was um, uh, when we uh, tied the ice together and it started to sink. <laughs> and you were out there. I was out there. That was when Ken stepped on and started to sink. No, <laughs> That's Ken was right. filming. <laughs> no, that was the uh, that was the most exciting time. So it was a pleasure, Ken, having you join us, and I I hope it was the adventure that you had wished. And yeah, it was. See you again soon. Great, thank you very much, Rick. You bet. You're lucky to have Ken. He was a great asset on our team. Thanks. We all enjoyed having his company, and we had a good trip. It was long. It was oh, hard. It was it a good was. trip. But we made it! We're here! Yeah! We did make it! God damn! We're here! High point? Um... Knowing I could survive the cold. 89 was a high point for me. Getting past it? Oh yeah. Took a couple days there, but <laughs> we did it. We did make it. 89. And then 90! Mm -hmm. God damn. Low point? Uh, when I wasn't sure if my... So I was gonna come home without my fingers. <laughs> uh, that really scared me there for a while. <laughs> yeah, that, all your fingers I still made there? It through, they're all still there. So are my toes. Those are even more surprising. <laughs> oh, low point. How about the most exciting point? The food is kind of crappy. Yeah, the food. Yeah, the food is very definitely. You all agree <laughs> the food exciting? is terrible. I like crossing that water lead there. Did you get footage of that, Ken? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I sure did. Little like under the water in the boots type deal. Yeah, yeah, that was that definitely was some exciting moments there. That was the most exciting. How about the hardest moment? I don't know. Adapting to the cold water it was mm. hard for me. I'm not used to this frozen stuff. <laughs> Where everything's frozen. Oh, well, you're used to it now. Oh, yes. How'd you like the dogs? Oh, they were great. They made the trip for me. Really? I, I enjoy them. Particularly fun, particularly the ears. Yeah, the ears are great. They wiggle them, take them, <laughs> go back and forth. When's the next time you're going to get back in the cold? Ooh, next not, winter. Yeah, not for a while. Not for a while. Take it easy in the warm sunshine first. Yeah, that's Let my no body thaw out. Looking forward to seeing you folks. Can't wait. Three more hours. That's a fact. God, I can't wait for a warm plane. Imagine that. Yeah. Woo we're going back home. <laughs> we're going home. <laughs> that in itself is exciting. Yeah, you bet, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was getting a kick out of you talking about uh, just signing up for the full body massage at all. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Cannot wait. Just to get the hell out of here. Yeah, 
get the hell out of here is right. <laughs> Imagine warm again. <laughs> I don't know why Pa's been here three times. <laughs> okay. You really got to be into this. <laughs> It's big time. Once is enough for me. How about you, Ken? Oh, I think this will do it for me. Had I mean, I'm not... Huh? Had your dosage? I think this will satisfy me quite quite nicely. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other parting comments to the viewing audience? Um, keep making it happen. Keep striving for what you want to do. That's a good cool. comment in life. Thanks, Genev. Uh, signing off. Ciao. Going home. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're on. We're just talking about some interesting things here. Well, we're here. We're at the most significant place in the universe, at least our little universe here. This is it. This is the hinge pin. Everything cycles mm -hmm. around this spot. That's a fact. And uh, the trip of 95. What do we have to think about? We've got to think about, we had, uh, in the what, a little under two weeks time that we've been out here, we've had enough amazing variety of the thrills and spills that the polar talent can throw at you all, all kinds of <laughs> including ice. a bump on your head right up there get the shiner out there <laughs> i missed that <laughs> we got your we got your pressure ridges in all shapes and sizes from your little uh, snibbling two-footers to your whomping i bet we saw some that were 30 40. oh yeah i'd say for sure um we had leads and Every variety of shape, size, and color from your basic little crack that's been frozen for a few weeks to your 100 foot stretch of open water that required significant detouring. <laughs> no kidding. A couple of cases, uh, more creative uh, approaches. We had the Bridge Building 101 pinning, <laughs> pinning floating ice pans together with ice crews to fasten them into a string of pontoon bridges. Um, we fashioned bridges from rubble. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we almost went to the ferry boat technique. I was hoping for that one. But yeah, I said you were calling that one one day. I remember I when you said we were going to go sailing boat. today. I said, huh? <laughs> uh, we'll see. That's why Ken's coming back in 97, because we have yet to do the ferry boat technique. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't want to miss out on that. i got to see the ferry That's boat. That's one of life's more interesting experiences. <laughs> um, and um, Ken here, the fellow on the other side of that eyepiece, mm -hmm. let me tell you about this guy. This That's guy has done something that less than, just, well, virtually no more than a dozen folks in the history of the universe have ever done. And that is to do to do the Arctic to its utmost, dog sledding to the top of the world. God and damn. As we count here today, we figure Ken is number 13, the 13th homo sapien, <laughs> to travel by um, Canis familiaris. <laughs> Those are dogs, by the way. <laughs> to the top of the world, uh, which is uh, there's not too many other things you can do on this planet where you can be, when you, where you can rank in the dozen or so folks that have ever done it in the history. And the history, well, we're talking, we're talking, uh, we're not talking the creation of science history, which is only 6,000 years. We're talking the Way Big back. Bang Theory history, which puts the history of the universe at about three billion years I think it is yeah some somewhere so, along that line so in three billion years it fell on the other side of that eyepiece ranks in the first baker's dozen or so folks that have been to this spot by the only way that you really should be at this spot uh -huh. by the way that God intended you to be at this spot that is by dog sled on the back end of a sled and this man has done it he's here he's here to tell about it and he's here to tell you too that he has gained a lot in the process Mostly in, in uh, sheer flesh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm proud of him. Uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. You know, we, we, uh, back at the training trip, you know, we weren't quite sure if old Kenny Casey was going to pull this one off, but geez, he pulled it off with, with a plum and uh, did a hell of a job, Ken. Hey, thanks. Got up for the game. Yeah. He did it. That was really nice of you to say that. Yeah. That was a hell of a game, too. We're proud of you. You did it with uh, with grace and style. You laughed all the way. And from my book, that that goes that counts for a lot. When you can come here laughing, you uh, <laughs> you got the right stuff. Well, I had a good guy uh, leading me up front. 
had a good kind of a maniac kind of chase all day long. <laughs> Can I take the pork top off now? <laughs> Can I untie it, please? That's great. <laughs> I tell you, all I kept on seeing is you way up in front there, and I said, God damn, he's still going. I Jesus said, well, yeah, Christ. I mean, yeah, well, you know, I'm sponsored by Duracell, so. <laughs> I, I can believe that. <laughs> Keep on going. I mean, that's all no the lie. The they could make a commercial out of you. Yeah, that's I know. No it's it's a sick addiction I've got. <laughs> so don't you get it? No. You just stay there in San Francisco and land on the sunny beaches because uh, this is a sick addiction. <laughs> I, I, mean, I got a really bad deal. I spent half my year doing this. Either not, maybe not right here, but it just as ungodly a place back in the cold winters of northern Minnesota and out in there every day. And it's sad. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. I bet there's folks in California that have encounter groups for people like me. <laughs> hey, but I get you, not, there's not many people in those encounter groups. Encounter groups. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. It's a small, small session. Well, I'm going in for my lobotomy next week. So I'm going to get a real job. I'm going to get a real job. If, yeah, I don't think it's going to really help, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, you can try it, but I don't know. <laughs> hey, yeah. so what, was, hey, what was the high point of the trip for you? Um... Hmm, boy, that's a good question. Glad you've asked that. Well, there were a few. I would say I uh, I did feel pretty good when we crossed that shear zone. I thought we were in for some big shit. There. Oh, yeah, that water sky scared that. the hell out of me. Yeah, I thought we were going to be stuck for a day or two. Um... We did two tenths of a mile in one day. Well, but I gotta say this, you know, being here at this place for the third time in my life doesn't, do, doesn't, you know, the mere fact of setting foot on this particular piece of real estate, such as it is, doesn't do a whole lot for me. What did it for me on this trip? This is such an interesting, you know, as a, as a as a group leader to work with a group this this diverse. I mean, mm -hmm. this is I've worked with some diverse groups. I mean, that's my my whole gig in the outdoors since the get go putting together uh, groups of people with all kinds of different backgrounds and levels of physical ability and disabilities and so forth. But this has got to be one of the most diverse oh. groups I've ever worked with. And no question. See them click, you know, they clicked as well as can be expected, and maybe even more so, maybe even more than I expected. See it have clicked as well as it did. There were, there were definite incidents, events of real solid teamwork here. No doubt. Along the way and uh, no doubt. You know, you got <clears throat> folks from China, folks from the U.S., older people, younger people. Um, and to see them click like that in a challenge of this magnitude as, as a leader, you know, that's, that's, that, that warms, my, warms my heart hmm. to have been a part of uh, putting that together. So. Yeah, well, that, that's probably that's, as diverse yeah. as you get. The oldest, youngest, and two different sizes of the planet. Yeah. We had Venezuela. And a Venezuela. Yeah. What was the low point? I can think of one. When we were at one morning, probably the third or fourth day out, when we were running up that lead and the sled plane to water. We got a radio scan going. Oh, Our airplanes that are about to arrive shortly are chattering on the radio right now. Oh, good. The morning that I fell in the water. No, when that when we were going up that lead, that mm -hmm. was not the greatest ice, and oh, and man. one of the sleds oh. almost went in. Oh, you had a tough morning. Let's talk about discouragement. <laughs> <laughs> you had uh, a tough morning. I was discouraged that moment, and I don't get discouraged very easily. I'm generally an optimist right out through, but boy, that morning those sleds were laying on their sides. Uh, I know you guys were doing all you could, but uh, I was proud of you. Because you were doing the best you could, but still, we were in shit there that if the sun went through the ice, mm. we were in a virtual whiteout. It was starting to blow snow. Mm. We were on very dangerous ice, and if one went through, uh, we were crossing a pretty significant expanse of freshly frozen ice, too, and out there, and that, you know, when you get uh, 20, 30 feet from shore, as we call it out here, and you punch a sled through, and you don't have any solid ice to, to get a footing on and pull the sled up and out of there. You, you're just shit out of luck. That's we, bad. You know, we were getting close to that point, trying to get through there. Uh, but, uh, you know, what pulled me through at that moment and that day was uh, as uh, as upset and nervous as I was about the situation, 
for those of you who had never been in that situation before, uh, you seemed to handle it in stride, and, and several of you kind of picked, picked me up and said, listen, you know, don't get discouraged, just hang in there, we'll, we'll make it work, and you did, you did. So you pulled me around too, you pulled me out of the depths of despair there, and we started clicking, and off we went, and we had a great afternoon after that, so dogs you know, are amazing animals. And, oh, yeah. You know, every time I get, I, I, I reprimand them, whether it was rightful or wrongful reprimand, God, I just feel terrible because they just, you know, they give everything they got. That's and not all right. they ask for is a bowl of food and a pat on the head. And, and uh, so they are really something. I mean, I'd, I've been with dogs now for, I don't know, 15 years, and I, there are moments every day when I just spend an, an hour pondering the fact that we've got these animals out here who are doing something just so ponderous. Oh, it's so incredible. <laughs> it's so incredible. No, they're absolutely unbelievable animals. They're, just, they blow me away. No, they, they qualify as unbelievable. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just so well suited to this environment. There they are, sleeping like beads on a rosary chain over there, <laughs> along the stakeout. Uh, snoozing away out here. You know, your average riding on the kitchen floor dog back home wouldn't last 10 minutes here. <laughs> and these guys, this is life itself. They wouldn't know anything else. They wouldn't That's want right. anything else. You put them on a kitchen floor and they'd freak. That's <laughs> <laughs> they are, like I knew, you'd put one of these things in the house and the house would freak. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, so that's right, course, you get moss in your anything civilized and watch out. <laughs> well, actually, you know, that's the special thing too about a trip like this is, uh, in fact, on, on our training trip, I gotta tell you this, uh, back in December, back in Ely. If you recall, on the training trip, we spent the first day without the dogs. Yeah. And we camped out in my woods one the first night or something. Same right. Thing. You know, for some reason, this, maybe it was just me, but it, kind of a heavy funk had settled over me. It was like, why am I doing this? And the next day, we fired up the dog team. And it was like, hey, this is cool all of a sudden. And it was again a reminder for me that what makes what makes the winter, what makes winter travel, what, what makes Arctic travel, so dynamic, so so interesting is is it has a lot to do with the dogs. I mean, I wouldn't. If we were just skiing up here carrying backpacks, I don't think it would do it for me. No. You know, no. you get team up with. You got a team of 14 folks here, and uh, plus a team that also includes another t uh, 20 dogs. There's a team of 34 out here. And that's right. And you know, you can spend your whole day honoring the significance of working in concert with these with these uh, Arctic animals. And so that 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 adds such a dynamic dimension to the trip. That oh, it makes man. it really special. The, there's such a mystique. A mistake about working with these sled dogs. That, well, you yeah. know, I got hooked by them. I just couldn't, you know, they just blew my mind all day yeah. long. Yeah. You sure the uh, city council is going to go for that code change so you can have that kennel in your backyard? Well, I'm going to try, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, you if they don't, get, I'll bring Mawson we'll over. The, uh, and... You think we'll get the 500 signatures? <laughs> <laughs> I know I can convince them. Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, let Ottawa run around bare his teeth a little bit. You really have two more two hours every morning to shovel shit, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they do shit twice their body weight every day. Uh, you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. In fact, we, when we were at the airport at Resolute and you asked me to go clean up the shit there, yeah. they were shitting faster than I could clean it up. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was a virtual shit blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that might... Uh, that might uh, give your neighbors a start when that applies. <laughs> okay, nice things about Ken. Well, how about your best fear? My what? Well, your biggest fear. My biggest fear was... My biggest fear started out that we wouldn't get there. And I, I didn't want to go through all this and not... Very goal-oriented. I didn't want to not make it to the, to the pole. And that second week, I knew we'd make it. The first few days when we were going through some big... Uh, big up thrusts and, and uh, leads and stuff like that. I, I, we were making two miles a day. I knew, I didn't think we were Hi, Charlene. So, uh, <laughs> and going past that thing, yeah, that, that truck about, that was floating about, around. Uh, my hands. And, uh, uh, I'd say the most uh, clinically observing people, I think the most stressful thing uh, in the first week was the, the cold and the fact that it was unrelenting. And, uh, and, and it was 
very wearing. It was it was much more stressful than anything else uh, than than in the physical labor, uh, that or, or other fears. I mean, trivial things like polar bears, which don't seem too trivial, but in fact, the chances of us really being attacked by one was very small. But the fact that we could get cold and we weren't hydrating enough and. Uh, and you just had a feeling you'd never get warm again, or, or know when that would be. Uh, I, I hated stopping for lunch. I thought it was too long. It would cool down. It would take me an hour to get warm again. Right. I guess that was the, uh, the worst part of it. High point? High point. High point certainly wasn't getting to the North Pole. Because actually, when I saw that we were within a couple miles, I knew we'd do it. Uh, my interests wanes greatly, so it was just more or less a political event. So uh, I think my high point was getting through the shear zone and watching that, you listen to that groaning and screaming of the ice, and giant blocks of ice weighing thousands of tons just moving around by, mm -hmm. by the forces of nature. It was, it was really awesome. Biggest fear, uh, how about your lowest point? Uh, low point was in those first few days it's too, when, uh, <laughs> when I didn't think we were going to get through the, uh, the shear zone. and. Uh, and I was cold and I wasn't acclimated yet. A lot of unknowns there. And, uh, that was about it. Of course, my other high point is having teammates like Ken Casey oh. made my day. <laughs> Always with his, uh, his laugh, which you can just hear in the background right there as he's filming us. And, uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, Keep camaraderie, and we pushed our way through it. We're the dogs like guys, Ken and Scott. And, uh, and we did it. And we did it. That was a tough last day, though. Last day was painful. <laughs> painful, right? <laughs> dogs, dogs wouldn't move. Dogs, every time they hit a little mogul, they just look back at uh, us and say, uh, hey, "You better start pushing." Just went that ball. Uh, oh, that was painful. All the snow was deep. And uh, as both you and I have our uh, giant blisters, a half our foot are gone, uh, <laughs> every step would hurt. So it oh, was, uh, it it was a never-ending thing. It was like trying to get to 89, we went back and forth, and we had to retreat from the shear zone. And this is, we, used to, we went a couple miles west instead of going north uh, to get around some stuff. And it seemed like that last, last couple of miles took forever. It was tough. But it was certainly nice to have that landing zone right next to it. Cause I didn't God want to have damn. to come back out. Oh, if we had to go look for a landing zone. Oh man, that, I that would have been my... one of my lower moments. <laughs> that time I hurt my back just an hour or two before, and I just wanted to get there. And we're done. Any last comments? No, I think it's a. There's two different agendas to the, the international team. I, I think our agendas were met. I think it was a personal challenge. Individual challenge for me, and then probably for you. And uh, I, I think we accomplished it. I think we should feel better, strengthened both mentally and physically by it. And, uh, we're addicted, as we know. We'll be doing more of this crap and saying, "Why the hell are we doing it?" <laughs> Nietzsche, that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's right. <laughs> I've quoted that many times to my surgical residents. <laughs> uh, if you're on, if you're on every other night, you miss, still miss half the cases. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay, thank you, Ken. Good morning. Here we are at the uh, brunch, uh, the, the post-trip brunch, and kind of uh, analyzing what went on. Uh, I'm looking for some questions from, uh, from Ken here. All, the, all, all the different people, and hoping that uh, Ken can give me some... Uh, okay, what did you think of Ken on the sled? And I, I, I earned some well, points on that one. Yeah, that, uh, that, that sled uh, driving uh, maniac. <laughs> sled driving maniac, pushing and pushing and pushing and getting us there. That was, you did a good job, Ken. And we're all proud of you. Hey, all right. I was like, hey, what was the high point in the trip? Oh, I don't think there was a particular high point that I can remember. The whole trip was uh, was one was one huge high point. Of course, if you got to talk about getting to the pole, maybe that was the high point. What about but, uh, the? But I think that uh, one of the most interesting things to me on the, on the trip was going through that chasm with the sleds or going through on the skis. The sleds went behind me. I thought that was really neat. To, that uh, Paul found that maze to get through. Right. Uh, the other high point, I think, was probably uh, build, building the uh, ice bridge with uh, ropes and pulling 
to get the sleds across that uh, lead. Mm. I thought that was pretty neat. Okay. What do you think of the shear zone? Uh, which which the, shear zone? <laughs> the, the big one with the with the water sky. Oh yeah. The eight, number eighty nine. Yeah, number number eighty nine. <laughs> well, the whole tri the whole trip had uh, many many interesting features in it. Uh, I'll be anxious to relive it all with the with the pictures we all took, and the pictures you took. And, the videos that you took, that's what I'm anxious to see, is your videos. Yeah, well I got some stuff. I couldn't take as much stuff on the road as I wanted, because we were always moving. Yeah, well that, that was the I was always on that sled. Yeah, I can, you know, the whole, everybody in the trip was an inspiration to me, and there's no way that, that I could have done this without you, without the other people who go in there. Of course, Paul, the leader, without Paul, nobody would have made it. There's no question about that. That guy is fantastic. And everybody else on the trip is fantastic. You were fantastic and run, run that sled. And I think that they, you know you were one of the strong points of the of the trip, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, great, thanks, Bert. That I appreciate. So, what was your lowest moment? The lowest moment was when I woke up and found my fingers were frostbitten. Uh, I didn't realize that that, that even though they'd been numb, that uh, that that would had happened. Hmm. I woke up suddenly one morning and they were all blistered. <laughs> That's it. That's the low point. Well, let's see, uh, Kent. Uh, I think the high point would have to be, um, well, hands down, is talking to uh, Charlene on a daily basis. Uh, had a really good time talking to her. No, actually, uh, that was up there, probably number two. Number one had to have been uh, flying in and seeing you all lining up along the uh, airstrip and crashing into the, the uh, pressure ridge as we landed and uh, getting out of the plane and, and seeing your, your beautiful face. Mm -hmm. On which I planted a strong kiss. For you. <laughs> you sure as hell did. <laughs> How low point. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. What was the low point? Well, that was good for me too. Mm -hmm. um, the low point had to have been uh, not making contact. Mm -hmm. You guys were around 89, and uh, not sure exactly why we weren't making contact and trying to devise a way to uh, write the news up in such a way that uh, wouldn't send panic across the. Uh, the field of spouses. <laughs> Anything particularly interesting going on at base camp? Yeah, yeah, we had, uh, boy, we had, a, we had a rousing bull tournament one day, <laughs> and uh, there was a day where, uh, actually we flew to Beachy Island, which was pretty neat, the Franklin Graves of the Lost Franklin Expedition. Huh. So, uh, no, it was a good time. It was uh, a bit on the boring side, which I was out there with y'all, but uh, down there waiting Waiting uh, for those radio patiently. contacts. That's right. That's right. That was what our day surrounded. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. <laughs> I don't copy over. I don't copy over. <laughs> I wish I could pass on a, a uh, personal message. Well, actually, I will, but I can't get one back from you. That was frustrating as hell. But All right. All right. So thanks, Eric. It's a good thing you bet, Ken. Hey, Ken. Enjoy traveling with you to North Pole. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, Hell of a dog, my shirt. There you go. Yeah, good. way to go. Strong. And, uh, appreciate you pitching in and helping us out when you did. So uh, we had a great trip, I think. We kept we kept our, we kept our sense of humor while we, we while did, we were at yeah, it. We could still laugh even in the worst of the times. <laughs> we, it was we had a tough some... trip, though. A lot harder than I thought it was going to oh. going to end up being. And I know Paul told me it was. They thought rougher than their '93 trip and had more. Stuff. Rugged terrain and his 86 trip as well. So. Yeah, well, pressure ridges, particularly oh, the first yeah, couple they're, of days, were killing they're us. They're awful. That first three or four days was terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, it was tough going. But, well, we was, made it. We did, yes. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. What was your high point? Um, Getting there, probably. Mm -hmm. Standing on the spot. The low point was everything between. <laughs> Cold and weather was nasty. Getting up in the morning was an absolute bitch. <laughs> what do you think your scariest moment was? Um, probably going through the shear zone. Hmm. Was the worst one for me. You know, standing on that ice and was breaking up underneath our feet, <laughs> and trying to jump from you know place to place to get those dogs across before those leads would open up on us. So, yeah, ooh. yeah, that was pretty scary. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, any other comments uh, to no, share? No, I enjoyed meeting uh, traveling with you when you're out in Montana. Stop and give us a visit. You got that right, Scott. All right, cool. Take, hey, take care. All right, you too. Thanks. Finally, I'd just like to say that uh, Rick and I, as organizers uh, of the trip, of the, uh, of the American side of the trip, uh, 
uh, referred to by two folks with the word heroes, but I must say, for myself, on this experience, um, you know, we, uh, uh, there were a lot of heroes, but I, I feel I, I appreciate a special sense of heroism, frankly, on, on the part of the Chinese who joined us for this, because to me, to watch a group of Chinese people sort of against all odds tackle something that seems almost impossible to do, given their country and their culture and their background, to go to a place that most people in China have no idea about, and yet uh, pull it off and do it with great style. And so I'd like to uh, pose the first of my uh, two today to Dr. Wee and the other Chinese for following a dream on top of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for, for myself as well, it's been uh, uh, another great adventure shared with uh, putting it together with Paul. And, uh, it started out as, as a great adventure for, for some friends and people who are soon to become friends. Uh, sort of a small group of about uh, seven or ten of us. And I, I remember very well, almost six, seven months ago, when Paul called and said, Well, uh, start brushing up on your Mandarin. There's a... Uh, we're going to be joining with a, a very special group of uh, uh, explorers and people and scientists from China and to, that are going to join us uh, in Poland. So it's a very exciting notion at the time. And uh, it started off with oh, about four folks, and I thought that would be, it would be just was going to make this a, even more special. And uh, now we're here with a, a veritable crowd of. Uh, 60 of us or so, and it, uh, it's just grown into a, a bigger and better thing as each month transpired. I was uh, pleased to, to be a part of this with the American team, to join with Paul, to join with Dr. Wade, to join with John Wade, me and Jeff, uh, John, sorry, um, uh, and all the rest of you. I was, I've been impressed with the differences as was Paul, of the entire group. Our group had obvious, great diversity. We had Papa Bert and Dan Hornbogen, two uh, gentlemen of somewhat middle age. We had Genev of much younger age, a diversity of 53 years there. We had Ricardo, of course, from Venezuela, and uh, our very famous surgeon from Chicago, and, uh, and even a cowboy from Montana joining us. The first cowboy to go to the North Pole, I'm sure. And of course, Ken Casey over there doing yeoman's duty with the camera. <laughs> Late at night, early in the morning, I was out there with the film. And of course, our, our Chinese team, who started off with, um, I dare say, few skills and knowledge of, this, of the Arctic and, the, and what would be necessary to get them to the North Pole. And it was, uh, Paul and I have shared uh, yesterday about how very, very impressive every single Chinese team member on the ice, how well they did, how the days that we put together, long days and no trouble at all, skiing, mushing, pushing the sled straight to the North Pole. And a small thank you to our base camp folks uh, who, don't, who do lots of work and don't get much recognition Eric Antons and Nick Claxton, Thu Jen, uh, Rebecca, uh, right there, uh, John Wade, Mr. Dye, Mr. Dye and uh, thank you to them. You do the work behind the scenes without sharing always in the glory. And then to echo Paul, to Dr. Wade, uh, a man who had a dream in China, a very started out as a very small dream in a very big place. And you made it a reality, and I'd like to propose this toast to Dr. Wood. You're on. I'm on. Ken, I've enjoyed working with you. Great. And for Ken's family, I just want to tell you, one hell of a horse here. <laughs> <laughs> He's worked and worked and worked. These sleds have weighed up to 900 pounds, and Ken and one other uh, are the workhorses for the whole darn group of 16. I love it. Uh, he's, uh, he's really put in his uh, time on the deal. No one has worked as hard as Ken. Oh, also, thank I you. just want to say that meeting him for the first time and uh, enjoying his company, he was so easy to know. I don't mean that simply. 
<laughs> he, a good person, <clears throat> and he got along. He gets along well with everyone. A person I've enjoyed meeting. Uh, oh, thanks, you be proud of him as a father, and certainly very happy and proud of him as a husband. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Well, what do you think about your time in the Arctic? What do you well, think of the Arctic? I this is my uh, fifth trip to the high Arctic, and uh, I have other work that I want to do up here. It won't be as strenuous. I have a very bad knee, and I'm afraid that if I were to complete this expedition, the other two or three ventures that I want to plan would uh, fall through. I wouldn't physically be able to handle it. And my next surgical procedure on my knee <coughs> zaps me out of these kind of things. So that thing over there. That one. That one. <laughs> yeah. They shoot horses, don't they? <laughs> I was going to say, you got big enough boots, you look like they should be on horses. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the big thing. I, uh, there's some stuff in Melville Peninsula I'd like to look at. And other Arctic ventures that won't be so severe. At my age, at 68, why? Uh, I tackled a little more than I should have. Uh, I brought my crutches along, but the snow was too damn deep. <laughs> <laughs> so, any high moment in the trip? Oh, the, <clears throat> it's been a high all the way through. Sometimes the highest. Mm. Beautiful. moments on the trip? I, I think the high moments are, of course, meeting the people. Uh, the, uh, the Chinese have been very friendly people, and, and they've certainly treated me very, very uh, exclusively, I might say. Uh, I've enjoyed that, and I've enjoyed meeting everyone else on the group. It's a people thing that really makes it. I guess the low, the low of a trip like this, of course, is leaving early. That is really a low to me. I've planned this trip and, and trained up and <clears throat> mentally and emotionally and physically for three months and <clears throat> now I'm uh, not completing it. I don't take it as a defeat. It's not a defeat. It's, Just I don't another take it as step a defeat. I maybe a little bit, a little bit like Ernest Shackleton. I know when to quit. <laughs> <laughs> know so, when to fold. I know when to fold. <laughs> so, that's kind of what my feelings are in the nutshell. I, I guess if I had a little time to think I could write a book. At least a chapter. Well, thanks, Dan. It's been, a, it's been a kick meeting you. Thank you, Ken. Let's, let's do this again. Well, something a little lighter for me, but probably a little more severe for you. Whatever. You're tough. Good, good. Ciao. I'll tell you only the truth. This guy, Ken Casey, <laughs> he is sick. <laughs> We've been trying to get him into the pen for the last eight days <laughs> and he fell in a close space. <laughs> also, we have been trying to get him out of the sled but he likes to push and push and push. <laughs> He's sick about it. He push, he put the Chinese inside the sled and he pushed the sled, the dogs and the Chinese, all of them together. <laughs> this guy is out of his mind. I don't know how you guys are stay with him, okay? <laughs> Uh, truly, sincerely, I know why. This is a great guy. I really like him. This guy is one of the greatest persons I've ever met in the weariest place in this world. Okay? I like to see him in Acapulco, yeah. in my place in Venezuela, and you, Charlene, you are welcome, very welcome. My home, it's your home. That's one thing that you can stay for sure forever. Hey, thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. This place, it's beautiful when there, there is sun. For example, right now it's opening the sun. But, uh, well, am I recording? No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were putting the camera the other way. This is a beautiful place, but the hardest and the very harsh I've ever known in my life. This is a very dangerous place, believe me. This is it. Yeah. It's beautiful, but it's too cold. I'm not going to say the F word, but it's F <laughs> freezing cold here. And uh, you get homesick very easily here. When you're sick and your family, when you hear the radio transmissions, you really know how much you miss them. And tears just flow so easily that fortunately you have your goggles on and nobody knows that you're crying for you. 
that you cry for your family, for your friends, and from all the beautiful things you left, we left down there, which we hope to see and to have them again soon. The sooner, the better. The best moment. Oh, the best moment when <laughs> was when uh, we were crying, asking for the whip. 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 Because I need pain. <laughs> I haven't been pushing so much this sled. I haven't skied for so long. So with me. Wait, I need to feel pain, nails in my boots, whip in my back, over the eyes, naked, naked. <laughs> that was my best moment, which by the way happened yesterday. And the first, and the, it happened yesterday. I was crying, but not of something, but just for happiness, real and pure. Happiness. We laugh. Every tear I enjoy. We laugh. Too much. We, we laugh. laugh too much. Yesterday. <laughs> About that whip thing, I remember. <laughs> whip and the chunk of ice. That's, those are the two things that I icons for this trip. <laughs> really, let me take off my glasses because I think it's bad manners that you don't see my face. How hard. Oh, the other thing. Now. My friend Ken, he knows how sick I am. <laughs> That's right. He's and sick. I know how sick, sick. he is. <laughs> That's the only thing that nobody else knows how sick we ha you have to be in order to be here today. In this place. This place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. You're very welcome, Ken. <laughs> we, are welcome. Okay. we are here. Yeah. Oi! Oh! Where is it?